Thank you. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Today Tonight. On this night, 60 years ago, the lives of Western Australians were about to change forever. The state's first television station, Channel 7, was counting down to its first broadcast. From the outset, the vision was to create a station that belonged to the people, bringing you the news from here in Perth and from around the world, to entertaining families in their lounge rooms and out on the streets. We all love the Christmas pageant. We really are a part of the community, even raising hundreds of millions of dollars to change the lives of children everywhere. Let's look back to where it all began. In a few moments, you will see the first live pictures transmitted from the studios of TBW Channel 7. This is the moment, 60 years ago, that changed the lives of West Australians forever. I'm very pleased, and I must admit just a little bit relieved, to be able to say at long last, welcome to television in Western Australia. At 7.30pm on October 16, 1959, the planet's most isolated city became connected to the rest of the world. And it is bound to affect, profoundly affect, the lives of the majority of us. For the first time, we were able to witness events that changed the world from our lounge rooms. When they first started transmitting, of course, you'd sit in front of the telly at 10 to 5 watching the test pattern because it was like having a movie theatre in your lounge room. As the very first TV station in WA, Channel 7 Perth became the heart and soul of the community. We want to make it a people's channel. The channel should belong to the people. Auditions started for announcers, newsreaders, entertainers of all descriptions. They came in their hundreds from all corners of the state, all hopeful of finding their place in this new medium of entertainment. When the TV studio opened in Tuart Hill in 1959, it was the beginning of a major local industry for WA, with dozens of shows made right here in Perth. We were doing live television out of each studio all day, every day. And so it was WA's version, I think, of a little Hollywood. You want to hurry? Oh, can I ask why? Reach for the stars! OK, you all ready? One of my earliest memories is of coming to Children's Channel 7 when I was a little kid for the Mickey Mouse Club. And it was always encouraged for the population to have a lot to do with this, this television station from the very beginning. From the very first news broadcast... A grim and painstaking operation to try to rescue two-and-a-half-year-old Graham Davies. Channel 7 became a window to the events that changed the world. John F. Kennedy died at approximately 1 o'clock. That's one small step for man. Oh, oh my God! Second airplane, a 727 just ran into the building. The news has really changed. It's gone from film to videotape to digital. But now you can beam TV news in live from anywhere in the world. People have got phones. And from a small and isolated city, one live production has changed the world. I can't think of any other television station in the world who has helped over such a long period of time research and care into helping children, um, not just in WA, but because of the research, internationally. Channel 7 and Telethon, a driving force saving little lives. The whole story about folate and the prevention of spina bifida, major achievement. The, the whole story of vaccines and how we eliminated a form of uh, meningitis that's really disappeared now. I think there's also a trust, especially with Telethon. You know where the money's going, you see where it's going, you see the children that are benefiting, you see the research that is benefiting the community. Telethon is the longest-running TV charity in the world. They will double that yeah. if you do a strip. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Over five decades, it's raised a staggering $306 million. We've done it again. $38,554,000. A new Telethon record. Well done, WA. Telethon's attracted the world's most famous stars. I believe the children are our future. Happy to be here. Everybody has been so wonderful. But the real stars of Telethon have always been the kids. 
remember sitting in front of the TV late at night watching Telethon thinking, wow. And here we are all these years later still doing Telethon, still raising a lot of money. When Perth businessman Kerry Stokes took control of Channel 7 25 years ago, he continued Seven's commitment to the community. But the most important people I want to thank here tonight who get behind the corporates in this company are the kids out there. And this is for you and it's about you. In 60 years of seven, another world record, Rick Arden and Susanna Carr, reading the news together for 35 years. Well, here we are at Perry Lakes. I'm standing here today in Soweto. Here in Monte Carlo Grand Prix time. Here at Kensington Palace. You can see here in Jordan. Here at Horse Guards. Live from the town of Whittlesea. Here I am in one of the oldest parts of Moscow. The film festival at Cannes. It's been a joy and a pleasure all these years, especially reading news with Sue. <laughs> Uh, to be doing it and still doing it today, and we love it. Veteran reporter Alison Fan has been informing West Australians for 50 years. Tonight, the startling new evidence that could blow the lid on the Perth mid swindle. Well, I started about 10 years after the station did, and right from the start, Channel 7 has been very, very involved with community, our audience, our viewers. Um, they've always made them a priority. And also giving WA a voice since 1995, the state's only nightly locally made current affairs show, Today Tonight. I think their involvement has always been um, totally focused on the community, on the mums and dads and on the families. From the serious business of TV to fun outside the studio, Channel 7 created events that made lifetime memories. Things like the teddy bears picnic, the brick ball, the hall in the one day, the Birdman rally, they were all fun community events that everybody got involved in and everybody remembers. Ladies and gentlemen, Norman Gunston and welcome to the Antrim Sun City today. The community events which you continue to do today and that's so important to people. To feel inclusive, they feel it's ours, they're doing it for us. The pageant, you've only just got to see the families that turn out for that, it's phenomenal. The pageant has been part of Christmas in Perth since 1972. Well, it's firstly the penguin and his igloo, which uh, we all hope doesn't melt today because it's very hot. A family favourite with hundreds of thousands lining the streets year after year, bringing Christmas magic to young and old. Since its inception in 1972, the pageant has been seen by over 2 million people. Time flies when you're having fun, but for 37 years Father Christmas has travelled from the North Pole to appear in our parade. As times and technology change, Channel 7 continues to be at the forefront of broadcasting. One thing that will never change is the passion to be a champion of this great state. Hopefully we'll be on top of it and we'll still be here. Not maybe Rick and me in 60 years, but well, seven definitely. <laughs> Feeling pretty good at the moment. I just want to say personally to everyone at Channel 7, not just happy 60th birthday, but thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you've done. Uh, for us to be able to, to do our work and to help the children and young people of Western Australia. 60 years on and still keeping the vision alive. The Channel 7 really was a part of people's lives. Uh, they appreciated it and we appreciated them. Another big part of people's lives and a key part of Channel 7 Perth is sport. It's in our DNA. Today, tonight's Mark Reddings is out at Optus Stadium. And Mark, we have certainly some great sporting memories. Yes, from AFL to Olympics and everything in between, Mon Channel 7 Perth has for so long delivered top-level sport into our lounge rooms. And for so many of those big events, Dennis Cometti has been the man behind the microphone. He even has a room named after him here at Optus Stadium. Tonight, Dennis lists his top five sporting moments since Channel 7 Perth was launched 60 years ago. What a legend. What a champion. Many consider sport the best form of reality TV. It's probably carrying television to a certain extent because uh, product is needed and sport provides product on a weekly basis. Dennis Cometti called many of those big moments for Seven. Tonight, he lists his five favourite memories. Seven have always done horse racing very well. It was one of our signature sports. Maccabi Diva winning three Melbourne Cups, that's something. 2005, she also won the Cox Plate. At number four, an epic Australian Open final. So I think back to the Australian Open, I go back to 2012, Nadal and Djokovic. What a game that was over five sets. Next, a historic achievement for WA. 
Well, number three, I guess, takes me to footy, and it's hard to choose, but I think perhaps the Eagles' first premiership ahead of State of Origin football, that made the national competition truly national. At number two, an event which united Australians. Australia 2, famous, famous time for Australia, that one. The first country to do it. I think they'd had it for over 100 years, and suddenly we came along. We came back to Fremantle. That was my first gig, actually, with seven. According to Dennis, the best of the best came at the turn of the century in Sydney. The Olympic Games are pretty big. They came in 56, but they weren't widely seen. Television in Melbourne was up and running, but we weren't, so uh, 2000 is the one for me. I thought it was a wonderful time in Sydney. They did it so well. The best Olympics I went to. Channel 7 Perth, leaders in sport for generations of West Aussies. When all the dust settles, 7 will always be my sporting home, I think, in terms of coverage. And congratulations to Dennis, who was recently inducted as a member to the Sport Australia Hall of Fame.